Welcome to DYOB, the Dance Therapy Podcast. I am Miles, and I'm the founder of DYOB, Dance Your Own Beat, which is the dance therapy movement. I've danced in over 40 countries, but in 2010, I spent four months in India, where I was introduced to Osho's active meditations and discovered dance to be a powerful tool for healing and meditation. When we express ourselves fully through dance, we shake off the stress and negative emotions that are stored in our body. When we dance, we reveal a happier, healthier, and truer version of ourselves. This fosters a deeper connection with people, especially those on your current vibe. Your vibe attracts your tribe. So I'm very happy to introduce Jeannie, definitely a member of the dance tribe who I met, what, seven years ago, was it, on the Gold Coast, Jeannie? It's about that, yeah. Seven years. <laughs> Damn, are we getting old, eh? Today, uh, she is a multi-award winning entrepreneur, strategic bookkeeper and business coach, currently Australian Bookkeeper of the Year. Woo! But when asked <laughs> by God, who are you? She will say. I will say, if yes, if I was asked, um, there's that beautiful question. Um, if you were had to introduce yourself to God, how would you introduce yourself? And sometimes I think I would say, God, I'm a dancer. <laughs> I'm sure God will be happy with that. I don't know him that well. I, I, well, I should him, I know him quite well. He'll be happy. <laughs> cool. So, um, so do you, what, what do you think about dance being a, a sort of a tool for healing, Jeannie? What do you reckon about that statement? Yeah, gosh, I have so many opinions on this. In fact, I'm just about to turn, move my office as I work from home and turn my entire office into a dance, a beautiful dance studio for myself. I think dance is a portal to the crystal realm. Interesting. Excellent. Wow. The crystal realm. Yeah, oh, I, like I, call, I call it, that? you know, that's, that's, that's like the third dimension or the crystal realm. Yeah. All right. Okay. Cool. Tell me more about that. Yeah, so look, um, I'm, as you know, Miles, I'm just um, not too far off launching yet another brand. My my 12-year-old says, Mama, you have too many brands. Anyway, it's my kind of final passion project, which links through to the strategic bookkeeper, which I recently launched, um, and it's called The Healthy Bookkeeper. And with The Healthy Bookkeeper, it's all about your mental, spiritual, and physical health. I really feel there are these three elements that are these overarching parts of our health, right? And for me, dance is my spirit, very much my spiritual health. I mean, people say, oh, no wonder you're fit. And I think, you know what, dancing, um, it's probably a little hard on my body. <laughs> but for me, it is my spiritual health. And I, I once um, spoke to a lady that's, uh, she's a Christian and her spiritual health, she absolutely gets from her church and her Christian community, right? And she said to me, if I moved to a new place, the first thing I would do is find a church. Well, if I moved to a new city, the first thing I would do is find a dance school. Um, mm -hmm. And it might sound funny because I love Latin dancing, but I love all dancing. Like I like, I love it all. Uh, but there's for me, dancing is it's joy, it's connection, and it's belonging. But I get to a and dancing is also bilateral stimulation, which works better than antidepressants. And it's been discovered if you listen to Dr. Kate Shanahan, my the nutritional wind beneath my wings. Um, bilateral stimulation does something very strange and transformational to our bodies as well as our brains. Uh, I think it keeps us young, um, but that bilateral stimulation, it literally releases these, these drugs in our brain, right? And so it really takes me to a special place where I feel something that I, I, fe I feel rarely. I probably feel it when I buy quite a bit. Um, certain activities give us this kind of thing. But, yeah, dancing is definitely my, my spiritual well-being. I think, um, I think the I, I agree completely. I agree. I, I hear what you're saying and I can completely resonate. Um, Tommy, you know Tommy? To, uh, not Tommy, yeah, he, Tommy used to talk about yeah. being in that moment when he was surfing, right? That moment when you're inside yes. the wave. And the way he described it, it was like, I can see that's how I am. That's the space I'm in when I'm dancing. You know, when 
everything's moving in conjunction and I'm, my body's syncing with the rhythm and I'm feeling what the music, music's feeling um, and I'm completely in that space, that is a form of meditation for me, absolutely. It's, yeah, it's meditation, it's mindfulness, but it's bilateral stimulation. And I've got a friend who surfs as well. And yeah, like it's all he talks about, right? He's obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with dance and it is that. And when I meet other Latin dancers, for example, we've got in the community, they we do act a little bit like addicts. Like they'll be like, when's the next dance? When are we dancing? When are you going dancing? Are we dancing? What's happening with dancing? And if... When you don't understand it, you don't understand it. And I really encourage everyone to think about that mental health, spiritual health, physical health, and the fact that we don't just dance to dance. Do you know what I mean? Um, we we dance for a spiritual release and, and a lot of these things. But, yeah, I mean, even when I am uh, not Latin dancing, because there's a little bar on the Gold Coast called Roosevelt Lounge and they have live saxophone and an incredible DJ that plays um, I think some of the best kind of, I call it like housey music, but it's really groovy and it's like I'm from Melbourne and I grew up with some of the best DJs in the world and I they don't have a dance floor but I'll get half that bar up dancing uh, <laughs> because I can help myself like I'm like how does anyone not get up and st- and then but like I'm not in control <laughs> you know. <laughs> but it feels good hey, to lose control when you're with your friends and you've got good music oh it's incredible you know that old dance like nobody's watching absolutely yeah it's a lot of truth in that you know yeah yeah when yeah I was in yeah India, i was in, um, and we were dancing a lot right part of the meditation was dancing um and i remember in my mind i was like okay just imagine have my eyes closed that you're the only person here you're the only person in this space there's no one else here you know just on dance as if you were dancing on your own and then that unlocked something in me when i was just like oh you mean i could have fun now i don't have to care about what people think and for me that was yeah that was um transformational having that realization you know like dance like no one's watching it, yeah it is and you know It's really, and this is the thing I know, something I I love Brene Brown and I read recently and it just exploded my brain, right, that courage and fear exist together and not separately. And I was like, (laughs) is this why when you muster up courage, right, like if you're not someone that uh, naturally goes and wiggles your body ridiculously in front of people, (laughs) without worrying so much because you actually when you cross a threat ho- threshold into this dance addiction right then it's like it feels so good that you can't help it but if you're not someone who's done that there's so much fear attached to what you're doing right um and and so and it does take courage but I think when you feel what you feel like it was the other day I was having a private bachata lesson with um a beautiful friend of mine, Dario, here on the Gold Coast, and he asked me to find the one in the music, right? And I'm hearing impaired, so I'm like, <laughs> and anyway, <laughs> I know, and he's and he knows that he's beautiful, and I'm like, okay. and I found the one, and I and so he had me doing just a little bit of basic bachata in the early part of the song. Now I could have just done the normal bachata step, right? So I'm going one, two, three, tap as Miles knows this. And do you know, I cannot, I really struggle not to get out of my head and allow my body to go. So I couldn't help myself. And suddenly I shimmied and he said, I'm glad you found the shimmy in the music, right? In other words, the musicality is telling our, it's sending a message to our body to do stuff. And my brain was like, I've been told to do a basic step, but I'm sorry, my body just kicked in. Isn't that cool? Yeah, so it's our mind that tells us not to do something that our body inherently wants us to do. Yes, it's true. And that's what I love about, you know, music is such a special, special thing. Like one of my family members is um is not well right now. And um it's actually she's it's a mental health thing, right? And it's been quite devastating to watch. She's young, she's beautiful. And you know, one of the things that is really recognized in that space 
is music. Now, she had not left the house for a social function for three years. This is a beautiful young woman in her 20s. And the first time out was to a dance school with me, you know. Beautiful. Yeah. And did she dance like a fiend or was she was she timid and reserved? Yeah, she was definitely that courage and fear existing together. So here she was and she was really like she was always a real natural too. And I think when I say natural, if you can let go for a moment, you know, if you can let go for a moment and surrender to musicality, if your partner dancing, it might be, and you're following, it might be surrendering to the lead, remembering that both men and women follow, lead and follow. Often it's um, the man and the woman. It's like, no, it's the lead and the follow. I lead a man at my dance school, so he follows. It's beautiful. So in those little in those little sparks of moments where she let go you know the joy you can see the joy kicks in and then there's this the brain you know the the voice of the shame gremlins and all that going who do you think you are you haven't done this for ages and and you're full of anxiety hang on a sec you can't do this so the brain kicks in but she's one of those people that she really does quite naturally surrender, relax, and the body keeps kicking in and going, I love this, I want to do this, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know that fight between the yeah. brain and the body Absolutely. that we don't have when we're kids. You know when we're kids and we just do weird-ass <laughs> stuff? <laughs> well, I think it's our fears. Our fears grow incrementally like a, like, a, like a network, like a web, right? So our fears are like a thin webs when we're younger and as we get older they get connected and it, obstructs the joy you know because we've got this sort of fear which is why you need to shake it off if they use that web analogy i truly think that when you do shape your body or your bottom ridiculously as you said um it removes um these blocks these sort of psychic mental blocks stresses you know um wounds that we keep in our body oh yeah and it's real i think one of the great things to remember is um somebody somebody else's opinion of you is actually none of your business. Louise Hay said that, right? So let's say I'm doing some funky, crazy dancing and let's say somebody said to me, you look ridiculous, right? Um, luckily, these kind of humans are far and few between, but there are sociopaths out there and there are people that are just damaged enough to want to hurt other people. Now, if that person says you look ridiculous, yeah, well, that's their opinion and it actually like first of all everything has the meaning we give it so define ridiculous I mean <laughs> I was <laughs> I was recently at home I'd done a samba class I've just started doing samba and um I was at home and the mood took me and I danced for another 45 minutes to 80s music like a crazy person at home by myself right and I thought how am I going to sleep but if I looked ridiculous or or not or somewhere in between but you know somebody else's opinion of you good or bad is actually kind of irrelevant to you and how you feel and what you're doing ultimately I really believe it comes back to values again Brene Brown um, and if you are someone that struggles with fears that prevent you from doing things then definitely Brene Brown's values exercise, I think, and just staying true to our values and remembering that somebody else's opinion of us. You know, I remember years ago someone insulted me and I wet myself laughing because I couldn't process it. I thought that I don't, it doesn't make sense to me. Like I know who I am. I'm a beautifully flawed human being stumbling along with the illusion of control like every other human on this planet, right? And I am I am everything and I am nothing. And therefore, when somebody says to me, you are nothing, I don't understand that. If somebody says you are everything, you know, what I think is beautiful there, if somebody says something beautiful to you, often it is because they're seeing into that part of your soul that I think we connect with during dancing. There's a, there's a quote, um, I am not who you think I am, I am who you think you are. That, that's, oh. that's something that resonated with me, which goes in line with what you said, right? Whatever you think I am, you don't know me. So you, you, what you think I am is what you think you are. You're projecting oh. onto me. 
Wow. I wrote a poem when I was young that was a bit like that. Yeah. yeah. And it was basically everything that you think I am, you like it. Yeah, it's you are. And another great thing I've heard is the mirror, you know, like when somebody, if some, if, you know, because it is a fear. People are going to think I'm silly or whatever it is. And also this deep desire to belong. We all want to belong. And if we feel like I look or feel silly, and everybody, and that makes me different to everybody else. Now I don't belong. Yeah. It's a paradox, and it's a paradox right? Isn't it? Exactly. We're, yes. We're hiding ourselves because we want to be part of the group. So we're presenting what the, we think the group wants. But what yes. we really want is authenticity. That's what we're looking for. Authenticity. 